So I want to introduce you to my guest, and this is John Howard. And John is a legal representative for the Cherokee Nation. Yeah, uh, can actually, uh, my name is John Howard. I am the meeting coordinator for Cherokee Nation Salagi LA. It's a satellite community of the Cherokee Nation. And Salagi, what is that? Salagi is actually the real name for Cherokee, and it means if you translated it into English, it would mean human being. Now, now I, John, just for the benefit of the audience, you, you look like a Harvard graduate that came out of, you know, born and bred in Boston with a long lineage going back to Plymouth. Well, there is that lineage. Um, I actually uh, hail from several different cultures. Um, as Will Rogers said, Will Rogers was also a mixed blood Cherokee, by the way. When he started out in show business, he was called the Cherokee Kid. But he said, uh, the Cherokee were here when the uh, English uh, pilgrims arrived and we tied their boats up to the dock. So there's been a long relationship between uh, the settlers and the uh, Indians of the Eastern Seaboard, especially the Cherokees. Um, but there's you know, the question is, well, where, who are these people? Where did they come from? Well, where... But before we get yeah. to that, what <laughs> okay. about you? What about me? Are you, are you have uh, any relationship to uh, American Indians in your... Oh, well, yeah, my father, um, and then his father, and, and all the way back. I mean, um, I'm, I'm a mixed blood Cherokee. I'm a Cherokee by birth and uh, culture. So you're part of the Cherokee Nation? Yes, I am. I'm a citizen of the Cherokee Nation. Okay, so now... The Cherokees are now, let's, let's just take this in a kind of eclectic fashion, going around and, until we get on to some subject about it, but like right now, where would you say the Cherokees reside? Most Cherokees live in the 14 counties of uh, northeastern Oklahoma. And, and how would you define Cherokee as opposed to Sioux or, or uh, uh, any other tribe? Okay. Navajo? Uh, actually, we could look at the definition of a nation, uh, which is a, a people with a common language and a common cultural heritage. Uh, the, the classical political science definition of nature uh, of nation is uh, is not bounded by a, a political uh, geography. In other words, a nation of people can exist beyond the political bounds that are set. By, uh, by geographers. So the Cherokee Nation is a collection of people who have a similar history and ethnicity and language. That's correct, yeah. There are about 270,000 registered members of the Cherokee Nation. About 15,000 of them reside in California. Um, and a few thousand others scattered here and there, uh, New Mexico. Uh, some in the southern states, but most reside in the, within the bounds of the Cherokee Nation in northeastern Oklahoma. And uh, do you, like, as a Cherokee living in the Los Angeles area and the other Cherokees you know, is there, a, like, a connection between the, you know, your relatives in Oklahoma and back and yeah, forth? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of, uh, historically, the reason there are so many Cherokees in California is because of the Dust Bowl of the 1930s. Uh, in, in my case, my grandfather had a, a farm in uh, Muldrow, Oklahoma, and uh, when the Dust Bowl hit and the agriculture failed and so on, then uh, he had to pack the family up and go somewhere, and that, that was California. I don't know if you ever saw the Grapes of Wrath, but that's pretty much our story. So a large proportion of Cherokees, along with a lot of other Americans, right. migrated to California. Well, just taking it back, how did these, uh, how many Cherokees in Oklahoma are about? Somewhere uh, between, I'm just guessing now, probably 240,000, 250,000 Cherokees. It's the second largest Indian tribe in the United States. And how did the Cherokee, is, how did they get there? Why did they pick Oklahoma? Okay, you want the short answer or the long answer? <laughs> about... And th this is arising out of the Human Genome Project. <clears throat> uh, 
about 50 or 55,000 years ago, there was a group of 80 to 85 individuals, <clears throat> excuse me a second, 80 or 85 individuals who left Africa and went into Asia Minor. They settled on the Peloponnesian Peninsula, which is today modern Greece. And from there, they moved up uh, into uh, South Asia, up into uh, what's now Pakistan. And from there, they migrated north, up through Mongolia, up to the Bering Strait, across into the Americas. And those people are who form today's American Indians. And they spread out all across the Americas. Uh, they have distinctive language groups. Uh, for instance, the um, Indians who lived in the Los Angeles area spoke a Uto Aztecan language related to the Aztecs of Mexico City, whereas the uh, Indians in the Central Valley of California and all the way into the Mississippi River spoke a Penutian language, which is of the same family as the Mayans. So you'll find artifacts in Oklahoma that are identical to artifacts found in Belize and Honduras. So there's a lot of uh, uh, connection between the various uh, Indian nations and their mores and folkways and so on. Okay, and then coming into more modern history, where were the Cherokees? When did, where did they form as a nation, as a unique culture? And, and how did they wind up in Oklahoma? Oh, okay. Well, <clears throat> the, uh, the Cherokees are part of the Iroquois Confederacy, which was located up in New York State and in, and in the northeastern United States. And uh, our particular branch uh, was centered in um, North Carolina, Alabama, Tennessee, northern Georgia, in that area. And when the uh, uh, colonists arrived in the United States, they found actually a government already in place. It was called the Iroquois Confederacy. And uh, it involved a, uh, uh, an agreement among sovereign nations whereby they would get together once a year to discuss their differences and problems at the federal level. And uh, this became the model for the United States. Uh, this is what George Washington and the framers of the Constitution used to uh, um, model the um, foundation of the United States. It was a new experiment in democracy based on a very old method of regulating uh, trade and commerce and justice between Indian nations. So you have, in other words, this, the subordinate elements of sovereign or states with some degree of sovereignty, but because they belong to a confederation, they abide by o overriding rules. That's correct, yeah. And so the Iroquois Confederacy became the model for the United States of America itself. And this, the um, um, states' rights versus uh, uh, federal mandates and so on still goes on today. Okay. so so the. And the Cherokees are one of those uh, the elements of the Iroquois Nation. Correct, yeah, we were part of the, the Iroquois Confederacy. What area did they live in mostly at that time, do you know? The, the Cherokee or the Iroquois? Yeah, the Cherokee. Uh, the Cherokee, uh, at, at the time of the landing of the Europeans, uh, we were located in uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, in that area. Okay, now just, I'm just curious, I like to ask things I'm yeah. curious about. Yeah. Was they, like homogeneous, that's it? This is all Cherokee in those territories? Or were they intermingled with other nations? Oh, there's this is a lot of intermingling going on. Um, and in, in fact, today in modern America, <clears throat> there are about 500 uh, recognized Indian nations in the United States. Uh, so, uh, and among the Cherokee, uh, there are three federally recognized Cherokee tribes. There, are, there is the Eastern Band of Cherokee located in uh, North Carolina. There is the Cherokee Nation of Oklahoma, which I belong to, which is the most uh, homogenous group, the most intermarried uh, 
and then there, there are the Kituwas, who are also uh, right next to us in Tahlequah, Oklahoma. So there's kind of a, <clears throat> there's a point in downtown Tahlequah where one way all the signs are in the Cherokee syllabary. We were the only Indian nation with a written language. So uh, you'll see signs in one way in the, in the Cherokee syllabary, and, and in the other way it becomes uh, the Kituwa, and which, which is a, another Cherokee branch. And they have their own chief and uh, their own uh, nation. Okay, so going back to history, so the Cherokees are li living North, South Carolina, Georgia, when the settlers, uh, when the, the immigrants come from Europe. Mm -hmm. the, I don't know, I don't want to call them pioneers or whatever. <laughs> What'd you call them? You called them the... Uh, pilgrims, The immigrants. pilgrims, yeah. Right? Okay. yeah. <laughs> the refugees from Europe. So, yeah. so they come, so that's 16, 1700s? Started, well, it actually started earlier. Our, our first inkling that there were other people out there was, uh, I, I can't remember which uh, Spanish explorer it was, it was De Soto or somebody, uh, landed in uh, Central America, and uh, runners came up the coast announcing the news. We knew that Europeans had landed about two weeks after it happened. And that uh, uh, created quite a stir, stir in the Iroquois Confederacy. Uh, so yeah, the, the, the first landing started in about the 1500s. The, the pilgrims, as we call them, the refugees from England <clears throat> started arriving in the 1600s. And we uh, taught them how to take care of themselves. That's what the, the Thanksgiving holiday is all about. I don't know if you remember when I was in elementary school, Squanto was talked about a lot. He was kind of the embodiment of the American Indian um, uh, sanctuary uh, movement for these, these poor pilgrims who didn't bathe very much and had a lot of diseases. So, so we saved them and taught them how to grow beans and corn and squash and things like that. And, and for that, there's this Thanksgiving holiday. Okay, but then it starts some Europeans brought along major wars, like the English-French wars that they, that were yeah, yeah, they executed were, here in the new, <clears throat> in the, in the new, new there, land? There are always uh, conflicts uh, among humans, uh, and there were conflicts among Indian tribes and so on, thus, thus the need for the Iroquois Confederacy. And the, the, uh, the Europeans brought their own set of conflicts. The first one was disease, which wiped out uh, a large percentage of the American Indian populations in the United States. Most people think that uh, uh, these uh, uh, conquistadores came in and just with their swords and muskets conquered great Indian nations. No, they brought in diseases which had never been encountered here before like smallpox and measles and things like that which killed millions of uh, American Indians. Now, I mean, I've seen certain references that uh, allude to the fact that that was intentional. I've seen paintings and, and read articles that yeah. this was a method of uh, depopulating the area. Well, I mean... Blankets, smallpox blankets. That There were cases of that, yeah, where uh, um, contaminated blankets were given to Plains Indians and so on. There, there, were, there were mean acts, but really, uh, at, at that point in human history, uh, disease was not a... a uh, even understood. The, the very basis of disease was not understood. Um, so uh, there's a very good book on the subject by uh, Jared Diamond called Guns, Germs, and Steel. And it's about uh, the, uh, the effects of uh, the intermingling of uh, societies that had been in close quarters with domestic animals and so on, and who had developed immunities to a lot of diseases uh, that were devastating to the American Indian populations. Okay, so uh, did the uh, press to push the Native Americans out away from the East Coast happen after the Revolutionary War, after the states formed the United States? Is that when the major push happened? That was the major push, yeah. Prior to that, the Indians were vital uh, allies to the, uh, both the French and the English. Uh, the uh, English 
and French uh, used American Indian nations as proxy warriors to fight for their own interests uh, in the fur trading business and for other resources in the New World. Uh, they, pl they played on uh, existing hostilities that were um, among those Indian nations and uh, recruited uh, Indians for their, uh, for their own purposes. Uh, after the, uh, the British were expelled finally in about eight, 1815, after they burned the White House down and a few other things like that, uh, then the nation turned toward Western expansion and crossing the Cumberland Gap and going into Ohio and all of that. But for the Cherokee Nation, the turning point came in the 1820s when gold was discovered on our land in Georgia. And so suddenly we had a president who was one of our greatest allies who we fought for and with. Uh, valiantly, suddenly uh, we found ourselves uh, facing a hostile federal government. Uh, the state of Georgia wanted the uh, Cherokees removed uh, so they could take our lands and, and go after the gold. Which president was that? This is Andrew Jackson. Okay. Oh, Jackson. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, the Cherokees uh, um, are very uh, much into uh, law. We are a nation of laws. In fact, we developed the laws that are now uh, the basis of the United States of America. And so we went to the Supreme Court uh, under uh, Chief Justice John Jay. It was uh, Cherokee Nation versus Georgia. And we said, look, tell these people to leave us alone. It was basically a huge restraining order saying that the, the people of uh, the United States have no right to take our property and to, to remove us from our lands. And we won in court. However, the president uh, said, well, um, regardless of what the Supreme Court says, there's nothing, let, let the Supreme Court try to enforce this. And uh, it was a standoff between the, it, the administrative uh, section of the government and the judicial. The Supreme Court, uh, there was nothing they could do. They couldn't order armies out. They, they couldn't do anything like that. And so uh, federal troops and the Georgia militia came in with guns and drove our tribe, uh, as many as they could catch, westward 500 miles to Indian Territory, which today is called Oklahoma. Now, some of the Indians ran off into the hills and their descendants are still there today. That's the eastern band of the Cherokee. There are about 30,000 uh, members of the eastern band, and they're, they're quite, uh, they're, they're not intermixed. They're quite um, full-blooded, and they, they carry on our most ancient traditions. Now, when you say Indian territory, was that a, a, a category or, uh, that came from the federal government? Indian well, it, if you look on maps prior to 1907, maps of the United States, Oklahoma called Indian Territory. But I mean, was there ever a statute or, or a bill or anything that was passed identifying that? Or is it just... Uh, oh, lots it, of them. Oh, lots they were of them. calling oh, yeah, it Indian yeah, yeah. Territory? It was called IT. IT. In fact, the, my father is uh, 90 years old. He lives in Shawnee, Oklahoma, and some of the bricks... Uh, on his house, uh, they, you know, how they, in the old days, they would make bricks and they would put the name of the brick maker on there and so on. Well, the bricks say, uh, made in IT, which is Indian Territory. Why? Well, so amazing. all the way up until 1907, it was Indian Territory. Now, 15,000 Cherokees were rounded up and forced to march at gunpoint to Oklahoma along the, the way uh, between four and 5,000 died uh, and under nasty circumstances. Uh, for instance, uh, the stories I've heard through the family, um, one guy was deaf and he couldn't hear what the soldiers were saying, so they just shot him. Uh, 
old people dying, children dying. So one third of the population decimated on the forced march from uh, our ancestral lands, which we'd occupied for about 10,000 years. And, and the government had already agreed belong to that group of people. I mean, before they drove them off. I'm sorry, what was the question? In other words, the Cherokees live, living in Georgia, yeah. it was recognized that this, this was their land. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, not like they were, it was already acknowledged. It was acknowledged, yeah, yeah. And, and then there was litigation after that where we sued the government and we actually won uh, $5 million from the government back then. The same Supreme Court that was defied by the president, uh, that same Supreme Court ordered the government to pay us $5 million. Now, the people who ultimately mined out the gold uh, extracted about $6 million worth of gold. But all that aside, uh, it was uh, an un unlawful taking of property and uh, real estate and so on. So they pushed them to Oklahoma, and that's you know, left about some of them ran in the hills, some of them came to Oklahoma, and the rest that came to Oklahoma, about a third were decimated on the journey. That's correct, yeah. This is called, this has a fame. This this, is a, it's called the Trail of Tears. The Trail of Tears. And so now, the, this, you had about 10,000 people initially, and that's about 18, uh, when was that that they arrived there? Uh, this all culminated in about 1832. And we're, we're, this show's coming to a close soon, but I, I just want to go jump from 1832, 10,000 Cherokees. Okay. Okay. Yeah, 1832, 10,000 Cherokees. And then we reformed, reorganized, uh, rebuilt our homes and so on. Um, and the Civil War came along. And once again, we found ourselves at odds with the United States. So... Uh, we uh, organized an army. It was the only American Indian army with our own general, Stand Wadey, and we fought once again against the United States, against the Union, on the side of the Confederacy. And uh, that uh, didn't turn out so well. The, the Union won. So in 1866, we were uh, forced to sign a treaty which uh, or a series of treaties, actually, which essentially um, dissolved the Cherokee Nation. We were forbidden from having a chief. We were forbidden from organizing. Uh, we were just shut off. And so for almost 100 years, up until the 1970s, when the government wanted to sign an agreement with the Cherokee Nation, they would appoint a chief for one day. That person would sign the document, and then their tenure was over. So in that period, there were about five, there were exactly five chiefs appointed by the government to sign a treaty document, and then their appointment lasted for one day. In the 1970s, uh, some of our Cherokee folks, Wilma Mankiller among them, captured Alcatraz Island and uh, started pressuring the government to uh, recognize our sovereign rights as a nation of people. And so the uh, uh, Indian Self-Determination Act came in in 1973. And by 1975, the Cherokee Nation had reorganized under uh, uh, the leadership of a man named Ross Swimmer, who was an attorney in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Okay, and we're gonna stop in 1975 because we're gonna do another show and we're gonna continue this. But before we uh, round this off, I just want to get a, a little background on this. Uh -huh. We've got 10,000 people, or 15,000, 10,000 make it. Mm -hmm. That's around 18... 1832. 1832. By the time of the Civil War, when they sided with the Confederacy, what was the population? Had it increased? I'm, I, I think it was around 25 to 30,000 at that and, time. I, okay. I'm not sure. And then 100 years go by, and what's the size of the Cherokee Nation in Oklahoma? Uh, right now, the Cherokee Nation population is two, about 270,000. Okay. So during that 100 years, the Cherokee Nation lost its uh, national sovereignty. It's, it's, it, it was not, it's no longer recognized as a state. Correct. Okay. 
And, and that's where we're going to have to go into that in our next show. Okay. We're, we're running, <laughs> we've run out of time. Okay. And, uh, but I mean, this is incredible, and we're just talking about the Cherokee Nation. Right. Because there was other populations that were moved into Indian Territory. Right. There's a whole history to the United States. Yeah. And the government of the United States and the government of the Native Americans or the American Indians in the United States. And I want to thank you for watching. And um, we now have a future because we have a new administration, so that's a wonderful thing. But I still want you to take some more time to go out and help some people. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next show where we're going to continue this discussion about American Indians. <laughs>